Hello, I'm Atubo George, and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for our daily bread? Join me right now and release your faith as you do this. Say, Father, I demand and I receive my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Receive a miracle today. Let your needs be met supernaturally today. I deliberately said supernaturally today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now then, we've been talking about manifest your lights. Because you see, the Lord says it's the season of our shining. And therefore, you must receive light to shine. Without light, you cannot shine. And if you've got to manifest your light, then you must first receive that light. John tells us that he is the true light that lights up every man that comes into the world. You are one of the men that have come into the world. Now, whether man, woman, you understand what I'm talking about? You are one of the persons that have come into the world. Where is your light? Where is your light? Your lack of shining is what is causing the darkness to still be on the earth. The way God has designed it is that he will shine through us. He will shine through us. When we look for Jesus, we don't look for him in the sky. We look for him in people. That's how he shines his light. Those that have received him, they are the hope of the world. So Paul says, Christ in you is the hope of glory. But the question is, do you know the work of Christ in you? His number one job is to give light to the world through you. Through you. So look at your life in all sincerity. How can you say you, 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 not us, you? This is, do a soul search. How can you really say you're bringing light to your world? How? What is your light? Where is your light? Do you even walk in the light? There are two times Jesus spoke of himself being the light. Two times. One is in John chapter 8 when they brought that woman caught in the act of adultery to him. And you know the story. They believed they had trapped him. They believe anywhere he goes this lady is trapped and him will be trapped. Because if he says, now they asked him, says, the Lord Moses said in such circumstances, she should be stoned to death. You, what do you say? So they figured out that Jesus had been saying, oh, I came to bring life. Okay, let's see. I came to save that which is lost. Let's see whether he can save this one. So they threw the question at him. And Jesus I gabuse and the brain. Not depending on any written information. When I mean written information, the Bible. Not depending on anything that has been said or done before. Received from heaven and spoke concerning that situation. And he said, any of you without sin should cast the first stone. 
and every one of them left. And Jesus looked at the woman and said, Woman, where are your accusers? They are all gone. He said, No one was able to condemn you. He said, No one, sir. And he looked at the woman and says, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. And that doesn't mean, I see, those without understanding that love to read the Bible will want to say, maybe it is possible that even Jesus could not condemn her. Maybe he had some kind of sin in him because he said anyone without sin should cast the first stone. You see, now that's lack of understanding because the purpose for which Jesus made that statement, now you will not understand it until you get this. The purpose Jesus made that statement was to free the woman. Then the question you should now ask yourself is why would Jesus seek to free a woman that was caught in the very act of adultery? So why would Jesus search for light to free the woman? Oh, no, 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 no. He wanted to, to he knew they wanted to rope him, so he, he freed himself from their rope. No, if it's to free himself from their rope, he would have brought a different kind of wisdom. Look at the end of the matter. He said to the woman, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. So Jesus acknowledged that she sinned. He acknowledged it. So they didn't bring the woman under a false accusation. They actually caught her in the act of adultery. If not, Jesus would have said, woman, I know where they were up to. You are innocent. Just go. But his last words to her was this. Go and sin no more. So Jesus acknowledged that she sinned. So why was Jesus seeking to free her? Now this is where light comes in. Now I was going somewhere with this. I said there are two times Jesus referred to himself as the light. So this is the first situation. And when he said to the woman, go and sin no more. The next statement he made was this. I am the light of the world. Why would Jesus make a statement like that after such an act? Now, this is not the next crusade ground. The moment the woman left and everybody was there wondering, okay, think about his disciples with him. You, you, I mean, think about a woman who was caught in the act of adultery and she was brought to you and then you just looked at her and said, neither do I come. No counseling session. No, no explaining. Come, why, 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 why would you do this to your husband? Why, why? You understand what I'm talking about? Just go and sit just like that. Jesus, the most holy pastor, teacher, prophet. Come on now. Just go and sin no more. Then that, that's what we should be telling everybody that sins. Go and sin no more. No. He knew they were thinking those thoughts. So he responded and said, Guys, I am the light of the world. What a statement to make. I am the light of the world. Now he said that because he just gave a judgment. And the judgment he gave was not based on anything everyone had said. The judgment he gave was by the light that he received from heaven. So Jesus, in a moment, saw why the woman was involved in the act of adultery. He saw the deception in the whole scam. He saw the deception of her own, her own husband. And, and you see, sometimes you just want to judge the act. You don't judge the circumstances that led up to that act. Now that's false judgment. See that now? So, so you, have, you have people, you have, you have men who... Because the Bible says God hates divorce, for example. So you find men who they are tired of their wives. They don't know what to do. And then they begin to maltreat them. They begin to push them to the wall. I mean, subtly now. 
subtly. They don't come out playing and say, I don't want you anymore. They, they just begin to put them in some difficult situations until one day the woman can't take it anymore and then she gets up and says, I, I, I want a divorce. And then he says, okay, no problem, I'll grant you your divorce. And then she goes and then they go back and say, it's not me, oh, she's the one. That says she wanted a divorce, so I allowed her to have a divorce. Now, you look at the woman and say, so why would you want a divorce? So you divorced your husband. So you, you divorced your husband. You, you remember the Bible said God hates divorce? Now you divorced your husband. Listen to me. God is not going to judge based on who did the act. God is going to judge based on the true light. He knows. He sees everything. So when Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Now, that kind of judgment can never be given by the light that existed as at that moment. There had to be a light from above to look at that situation and give the accurate judgment in that situation. Now, I told you, our life is based on the decisions we take. See, so Jesus manifested a light in that situation that no one has ever manifested before. And the light that he manifested was now the light. The second time Jesus referred to himself as the light was in John chapter 9. Incidentally, the following chapter after this. Now, in this situation, Jesus met a man who had been born blind. And then they asked him, why was this man born blind? Who sinned? Him or the parents? And Jesus said, no one. But that the work of God may be manifested in him. That's what Jesus said. But that the work of God may be manifested in him. And then he says, I must walk the walk of him. Let me read that scripture. John chapter 9. From verse 3. Now let me just run it down from verse 1. Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the work of God should be revealed in him. I must walk the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can walk. Then look at verse 5. He said, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. See that now? As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Now the Bible said when he said these things, he took the man and anointed his eyes and told him to go wash. And the man came back seeing. Now this Two situations have to do with his personal judgment or his personal assertion of the situation. And he gave verdicts. Now the first one, the woman, and incidentally, both of them had to do with the question of sin and iniquity. See that? So the first one, this woman sinned. She committed the act of adultery. What do you say? He gave his verdict freed the woman the second one oh who seen that this man was born blind he gave a verdict says no one see now they at that time the darkness with which they walk by yeah i said that the darkness with which they walk by tells them that for someone to be born deformed somebody it must be the judgment concerning someone that have existed before him or he himself see that now but how do you say a child born deformed sin when did the child sin in the womb and no oh, no no even david said in sin did my mother conceive me so we we're all born sinners from the womb come on now praise god so so jesus looked at the situation and said none of them but you see there is something else and what is it he says see as long as i'm here I will do the work of my father. And, and God's work will be made manifest in this man's life. He brought a light to that situation. Now note this. Jesus shined light by first his judgment about the situation. First his judgment about 
the situation. Next, Jesus shined light by changing the situation. See that? He changed the situation. So I asked you, I said, where is your light? Where is your light? How have you shined your light? Now, if you are shining light, remember, there is so much darkness. So everything you see around you, the probability that it is born out of darkness is high. So everything you are dealing with in your life today, you need money, you need a new job, you need an employment, you need a business, you need to make decisions concerning who to get married to, what city to live. All those decisions are decisions you have to make. Now, if you follow the normal system of things, most likely you will be walking in darkness. So for you to shine your own light, now hear me, first you must receive light from the Lord Jesus concerning that situation. I shared something with you yesterday, you know, when I was talking to the Lord about, you know, false prophets and how they, they do stuff to a lot of people. Now, by the time the Lord was done with me, I received light from heaven. So my thinking, my judgment concerning the situation changed. Now, that's the same thing that happens to us. Now, that's why it's important concerning every situation. Now, I've been sharing with you that you go to Jesus to receive light from him. He is the one that lights every man that comes into the world. So, every man that comes into the world receives light from Jesus. So, if you have not received light from Jesus, now understand this, it is not a one-time thing. You don't say, oh, I got born again at that altar. That was when I received light from Jesus. No, sir. Everything you decide on, every thought of your mind, you've got to run it by him. That is how we live. Now, bring it to what the Lord said in the book of Deuteronomy. Moses quoted God. He says, man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Why can't I stand and begin to judge false prophet? Because a word came out from the mouth of God to me consigning that situation. And that word gave me light. See, when I received that word, I lived a life. You see, in him was life. Understand this. In him was life. So I found in him in the word that he spoke to me, I found life. And as I adapted, adopted that life to live, what happened? That life began to give me light. So it has affected my attitude. It has affected my behavior. It has affected my speech and my reasoning concerning those things. Now it's the same thing concerning everything that you'll be involved with. Where do you receive light from? If it's not Jesus, then probably you have only received darkness. Now, when you understand this, you will not always be running to pastors for counseling. Rather, you will go to pastors to share your thoughts and get confirmations and rub minds with them. And that's the truth. You see that now? Oh, pastor, I, I don't know what to do. No, no, no. Go pray. Let the Spirit of God give you light. Now, when he gives you light, now many times you begin to say, wow, wow, wow. Now, because it's new and, and you are living in a world that is so full of darkness, you may be unsure. So what you do in that situation is look for witnesses. You look for witnesses. So you can go to a more mature person than you are and say, hey, I was thinking about this situation. Describe how your light came. Don't just say this is what I think. Describe how your light came. From your description, now this is what happens. When you describe how your light came, you are bearing record of what the Holy Spirit have done. 
And if it is truly the Holy Spirit and you are talking to someone who has the Holy Spirit in him, guess what's going to be happening? The Holy Spirit is going to be bearing witness in his own heart that yeah, he is speaking about what I told him. Now, even if the person has not received that light, by your words, that person will be open to receive light from you first and then if he takes it a step further from the Spirit of God. Our time is up. Praise God. Ali Barushi Kata Managadia. Le Bunga da Ganzegede. Kendo Branuzi Egedefia Kata. I pray the Spirit of God help you today. I pray that you indeed will begin to receive light from Him. And I pray that from today, your life will become a shining light. Not just for yourself, but you will be a helper of men. That they too will begin to receive their light because they see you walking in the light. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be blessed today. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.